Um, so quick introduction. My name is Dr. Brian Lau. Um, you can feel free to call me Brian. I have no problem with it. We're all doctors here. Okay, so let me just give you my name. And this is my email. Okay. There you go. It's blau, dds at hotmail.com. Okay. If you're in class, please take that email down, guys. Just write it down somewhere. Um, feel free to email me anything you have about the course. All right. I, I am here to answer all your questions during class or after class. If you have questions during the class, that you don't feel like talking, please type in your question in the chat box and I will answer that as I see them coming through, okay? And if possible, everybody, camera on, so I know at the very least you are actually in class, not just out there somewhere, okay? Okay, so a quick introduction about myself. Um, I am a general dentist. Okay, I don't know if there's any specialists in this group. I am a general dentist. I graduated from New York University, class of 1999. So this is, I've, I've had more than 20 years of clinical experience. Um, I started my career in, as soon as I graduated from NYU, um, I moved, I met my wife at NYU um, I'm a dentist. She's a, she's got her, she got her degree at um, MBA. So we relocated to Gilbert, Arizona. So for, I don't know if anybody knows where Gilbert is. It's that tiny little place um, that, for some reason, at the 2000 census, it was named one of the fastest growing city in the country. So. By the time I went to Arizona, which was 2002, I started my dental practice. Um, when I opened up my first dental practice there, there was pretty much not a lot of dentists, but within six months to a year, within five mile radius, I think there was about 30 dental office that opened within, within a year. So where I opened my practice in 2002, within, a, um, within, within six months to a year, we had 30 new offices opening up all around us, um, which was kind of fun and Everybody knows what happened in 2008. Uh, the housing crisis hits. Um, it, it hit Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, especially hard. Um, every house was like half off, 50% off. Okay. So overnight, everybody was losing money. Um, from 2008 to 2010, what I heard was that in those two years, there was more than 150 dental office where, around where I am that either closed, merged, or completely just shut down. And I still remember this vividly because one, one time I was driving by a dental complex where there was like six dental office in the same complex. And I saw all these movers and I was just kind of curious because one of them was my friend. So I went in, I, I parked, I went in their office and there was two brand new Sterec machine unopened. And I asked my friend, well, what's going on? He says, he has to close. And I said, what are you going to do with your Sterec? He says, either I have to return it and if they don't take it, I have to sell it. And they were brand new Sterec, not even open. So why am I telling you this story? Because in 2008 to 2010, where everybody's dental practice was kind of sliding down, I had a 20 to 25% annual growth. And it got to the point 
that our favorite insurance company, Delta Dental, came to my office and audited my office three times. Within a year and a half, they audited my office three times. First time I was like, okay, this is, this is normal. Second time I was like, you know, this is starting to kind of bugs me a little bit. The third time they audited me within a year and a half, I, I just couldn't figure it out. So I asked the lady, you audited me three times in a row within, within a year and a half. What's, the, well, what's, what's, what's going on? And she said, we cannot figure out why everybody's office was, was going down while your office was incre- had a 20% production increase every year. We, we cannot figure it out, okay? So that kind of makes me happy because I can tell you in 2008 and 2010, from 2008 to 2010, where everybody's office was going down, the one thing that really saved my life was orthodontics, okay? Because if you think about it, we all have kids, okay? Most of you have kids, I, I shouldn't assume. Most of you are married. God bless you. I'm married. God bless me. Okay. Um, Been married for 20 years. Okay. Still regret it, but it's still going. So happy about that. Okay. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life is got down on my knee and my proposal to my wife. For that one night, I've been paying it for 20 years. Still paying it. Still paying it. But that's fine. That's fine. I love her and I'll keep paying it. Okay. So why am I telling you this story? Because if you have kids, you all, you all know that even if you don't have money, even if you have to save money here and there, if the kids need something, you and I will spend it on them, period. Right? That's the bottom line. So from 2008 and 2010, and I had a... I had a very busy general dentist practice. All the cosmetic dentistry was gone. Nobody was doing veneers. No one was doing veneers, okay? No one was doing full mouth cases, but the kids were still getting ortho treatments. The kids as young as eight or 10 years old were still getting ortho treatment. You know, granted that most of those cases ended up being on a payment plan, which is completely fine because on the, the payment plan in my office was usually you leave your credit card, we'll call you, we'll charge you at the first of every month, okay? And I was starting anywhere close to 150 to 200 cases a month, a year, I'm sorry, okay? So you take that payment plan. So guys, every month, the first of the month was a good day for me. Why? Because all I hear is ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. That's the credit card going through, right? Every month, that daily production, as soon as I hit it from the Dentrix machine, I'm happy. Because the, the first of every month, we were collecting four or $5,000 without doing anything. Because why? I had patients on an orthodontic payment plans. Okay. Now, ortho is not something that you, you're just going to pick up overnight. There's no way. I, I can tell you right now. As soon as I graduated from NYU, I wanted to go into ortho residency. In fact, I was accepted into the NYU ortho residency program. I just didn't go. Why? Because I got down on my knee and I proposed. Okay. As soon as you get married, you have to start supporting a family. All right. But then I was looking and all, all the time when I had my practice going, I, all along, I knew I needed to do orthodontics, whereas a lot of my friends were jumping right into implants. Okay. And not not that implant is wrong or anything, but you and I, for those of you who's been practicing for an extensive period of time, you all know that in order to place implants, you have to have space, you have to have bone, okay? So in order for you to be, place implant in my own, in my own
occlusion. And what is occlusion? Occlusion is orthodontics, okay? So that's kind of how, how I see things, okay? Um, so as soon as I graduated from, from NYU, you know, you guys get these, all these brochures. Now the brochures are even worse. It's coming through the internet. Like, you know, we're bombarding you with a bunch of internet e emails and everything. You're like, I can't, you know, as soon as you Google ortho, all of a sudden, all these things on Facebook start popping up, right? And you have literally no idea it's best for you. Now, when I was going through which program I wanted to select. I told myself the weekend courses are gone. There's no way you can learn ortho on a weekend courses. Because if that's the case, why would you even want to go to a ortho residency program, right? So the weekend courses are gone. The six month courses, to me, you don't learn anything, okay? You, you simply don't learn anything, all right? So I, I, I was in New York for 10 plus years. so. Weekend courses, forget it. Six month courses, forget it. Right? All right. So what does that what is that what does that mean? In order to learn orthodontics, the most important thing is fundamental. And to me, the the best program out there, when I was going through my 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 decision, was progressive orthodontics. And why? Because it is a completely comprehensive program. It's two years of programming, okay? They start off by training you on the basics. And much like all of you, I went to a free seminar one, okay? The, the, the keyword is free, because that's when we started to kind of wheel you in, right? So I went to a free seminar one, day one, and as soon as I sat down and I listened to what they have to say, I, I, I was blown away because they were showing cases that if I go through the program, I could treat the cases, okay? So I, I still wasn't a big believer, I'll be honest with you, okay? So I had to call POS and um asked to speak with somebody and i still remember today um, i got a call from one of our instructors dr joe viviano he's been with the company for over 20 30 plus years he calls me like almost within half half an hour when i call and he explained to me what the program is and after that i was sold okay um, so I spend the next two years, actually I spend the next, that, so that the entire program is a little less than two years. There's 12 seminars. Each seminar is four days. So that's a total of 48 days. Um, one of the things I really love about POS is that there is a free lifetime retake policy. So if you take the class once the first time, you probably don't learn anything. I'll be honest with you. The first time I took POS, I probably learned about maybe 60%. So I came back and take it again. The second time I took it was up till maybe 70%. And then I took it again, because let's be honest, I'm married. What are you gonna do when you're married? The only thing you can do is go to classes, isn't it, right? So for the next, year, next six years, from 2000 to 2006, I spent six years learning how to do ortho. And after that, I jumped into implant at UCLA. I went to UCLA residency program for the implant. And that's kind of how my career is. I, I've, I started with orthodontics. I've moved on to implant. I've moved on to uh, GBR, how to do graphs and everything. Um, so I was in Arizona for about 10 plus years. Okay. I developed this thing called the carpal tunnel syndrome. Everybody knows what that is. Okay. Why? Because I was so busy in Arizona. I was a one man team. I had two offices. I did not have a hygienist until 
maybe five or eight years later. I don't quite remember. Okay, and I'm, I'm not afraid to share this with you guys. I was cranking about 1.2 to 1.5 million a year just by myself. Okay. Um, and I would say maybe about 20 to 30 percent of my practice was devoted to orthodontics. Okay. Crown and Bridge are still going to be your bread and butter because we're all GPs here. All right. So, in short, in short, I really thought that ortho saved my career because after 10 plus years of practicing in Arizona, when I developed carpal tunnel syndrome, the doctor says you either have to get the surgery or you have to take time off. Well, guess what I did? I took a few years off, okay, relocated back to Taiwan, where my wife is from. Okay, we brought our little boy back so he can learn how to speak Mandarin. So in case nobody knows where Taiwan is, we're that little island right, right off the coast of China, okay? It's a tiny little island right by there. So we moved back to Taiwan for a few years and um, four or five years ago, we moved back to the States. So this time we decided to move to a colder climate, okay? So right now my practice is in Bellevue, Washington. Okay, so I don't know if there's anybody that lives in Seattle, Washington area, but my practice is in Bellevue, Washington. And if you're around me, feel free to stop by and say hi. Love to meet everybody. Okay, so this is a question that everybody always wants to know. Why do I need to learn orthodontics? Why can't I just do aligners? take a couple impressions and have the lab set up whatever they need to set up. The reality is in order for you to do aligners, you really have to know orthodontics. Otherwise you're basically at treating the patient based on what the aligner technicians are telling you, isn't it? Right? For those of you who has done aligners and I don't care which brand you used, okay? the big evil empire out there, we all know which one it is, okay? If you send a case to them, you don't actually get the treatment plan done by an orthodontist. It's the technician that sets up the case, okay? So if the case goes wrong, something happens, guess who is liable? It's you and I, isn't it, right? So it is always my belief that in order for us to do good orthodontics, and I don't care which one you use, if you're going to do aligners, that's perfect because we will teach you aligners. If you're going to do wire ortho, that's perfect because we will teach you how to do wire ortho also. Okay, so let me share my screen with all of you. Okay, so let's do this real quick. All right, so... Okay, so everybody could see my screen. Gabby, can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. So we are actually based in California, okay? And I am a 10-year POS instructor. What does that mean? It just means that I've taught more than 10 years, basically, okay? So that's me, okay? I got my undergrads in UC Irvine because I actually grew up in LA. And I got my degree at NYU, okay? After that, I did a residency program, blah, blah, blah. And yes, I am certified with that company that I just said not to, not to mention their name, okay? But I am certified with them, okay? Did a residency at UCLA, blah, 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 okay? So my practice is currently in Bellevue. This is Dr. Don McGann. He is the founder of POS. And I consider him to be one of the most influential dentists that's ever been around. Um, he, like all of us, he is a general dentist, but he founded the Progressive Orthodontic Program. Okay, so everybody always asks this question, why orthodontics? Okay, let me give you guys a case to take a look at. 
if you see this girl, and it, she is a girl, I, 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 it's, she is a girl, okay? So if you see her, what is the first thing that comes, your, comes to your mind? If you can, please type in your answer. Somebody, anyone, let's talk. Give, give me something that you notice right off the bat when you look at this girl. Don't say the haircut, okay? Just give me something, all right? Everybody, anyone, give me some answer in the chat. You don't want to talk to me, that's fine. Crowding, what else do you see? What else do you see? Anybody, anyone. Aesthetics. Aesthetics, oh yeah, she's, she's not much to look at. I, I would agree, okay? Anything else, anybody? Cross by, possibly crowding, spacing, slight open by. That's all very good answer. What about the midline? The midline is off, right, everybody? Missing laterals, possibly, right? If I were to ask you by looking at her profile, which is this picture right here, does she appear to be a class one, class two, or class three case to all of you? Everybody knows what class one, two, and three is. So I don't have to reiterate that. Class one, anybody else? Class one, anybody else? Anybody else? What about that? What about that? Right? Class three with mandibular prognathism. Okay, anybody else? I mean, that's a central, that's a first light cuspid. Looks to me like she's missing a upper left, upper left two and an upper left three. A lateral and the canines are missing, right? Okay. That's her posterior. She's missing a bunch of teeth. I mean, that's her panoramic x-ray. Wow. If this patient walks into your office, what, what do you think her chief complaint is? What do you, what do you think her chief complaint is? What do you think her chief complaint is? Pain, maybe. Okay, I don't really, I mean, there's, I can tell you right now, there's really no abscess. I mean, I know that's a bombed out tooth, but she's not really having any issues with that. You know, and I hate to sound so blunt, but I think her chief complaint is this. I'm ugly, make me look good. I, I think that's her ultimate chief complaint, right? Aesthetics, I would totally agree with that. Okay, so, you know, on a case like this, I don't know if I can keep that tooth. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen to that tooth. That's a goner for sure. Right? Mm -hmm. She's already missing a second molar. And if I extracted that, what am I going to do with that? Can I keep it? Can I use it? Or do I have to extract that? So that's a good question. Let me ask you guys this. If I have to extract this, which I this is this is a goner for sure. Can we use that lower left third? Can we upright it? Yes or no? Just give me your answer. Yes or no? Anybody? Anyone? Can you upright it? Can you use it? Okay. Everybody says yes, right? Are you worried that if you upright it, you may have a perio pocket with bone loss around here? I would be, right? What are you gonna do with this area? I mean, if that's a central, that's a lateral, that's a cusp, but that's a first bite, I'm missing a second bite, first molar, second molar. Am I gonna have to add more teeth back here? How many teeth I have to add back here? I'm missing a lateral and a cuspid right here. Do I have to add both teeth back? Or do I, can, can I add both teeth back? If I add all the teeth back, does she have any room for it? 
is her profile going to tolerate all that advancement? So if you ask me a case like this, I honestly don't know if aligners are going to be able to treat this. Yes, you can. I'm not saying you can't. But you have to have a treatment plan, isn't it? Right? You have to have a treatment plan. Because if you don't have a treatment plan, you just take a couple, bunch of impressions and you send it to, to whatever aligner company you're doing, they're just gonna come back with whatever they think is right. And if you don't know anything about orthodontics, you're gonna start treating the case and you might not be exactly where you want it to be for this case. Right, everybody? Okay. So to me, this is why I think ortho is extremely important, okay? Not to mention that you do get paid for that. Now, this case that I'm showing you right now, I ended up placing five implants for her after the ortho was done, okay? And I got paid $25,000 for that case in a two years time. Okay, all right. So to me, these are some of the things that we absolutely can do, all right? So can you upright that eight? Everybody says yes. Yeah, there you go. Okay. If you ask me, I think this is very impressive to go from here to here. I don't know how I don't know how you guys feel about this, but I think this is very impressive. Okay, that's what she looks like at the end. Okay, all right, that's what she looks like at the end. Okay, we place a bunch of implants back here. Okay, we place a bunch of implants here, implants right there. All right. Okay, so that's the before and after. She did something with her hair. That's why it looks better. Okay, now if you ask me, is this case perfect? I would say absolutely not. Why? The biggest issue I had was this lateral. Okay, I never, I never really noticed about that lateral until after the case was done, right? Because that's an implant crown right there. Okay. This is not perfect, but guess what? It is absolutely better than what she had before, isn't it? Okay. Gave her teeth back here. Okay, took that out, put an implant in there. Okay. So to me, that's what ortho can do for us. It is, it is actually extremely gratifying to be able to take a case that looks so messed up and make it into something that you and I can be proud of. I, I'm, I'm actually very proud of that case. I'm a GP. I'm a general dentist who does a lot of ortho and who does a lot of implants. Okay. But it is very gratifying for me. Okay, so that's what we can do. And if you think about it, orthodontics is more than just opening up spaces and placing implants. Okay, let's take a look at this case. And I truly believe this, to, this statement to be the truth. Orthodontics is cos cosmetic dentistry. You and I all love doing veneers. We all love doing, you know, smile makeovers. Um, but the reality is, guys, not every case you can put a veneer on. I mean, take a look at this girl. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at her? Just put, put your notes in there somewhere in the chat. Everybody, let's go. What is the thing? What is the thing that you notice when you look at her? What is the thing that you look at her that's bothering you? Pro, 
procline interior protrusion, class two smile. What else? What else is there that's really bugging you? Anybody? There's one thing that's staring at me that I absolutely don't like and she doesn't like it either. What else is there? What else is there? I mean, if you look at her smile, isn't she showing a little too much gum? Right, everybody? I think this girl has a little bit of too much gummy smile. And if you were to and if you were to look at her profile, some of you say she's protrusive. So by definition, if you see protrusion, what kind of treatment plan are you leaning towards to? Anybody? If you see protrusion, what is the treatment plan you're leaning towards? There's only one. There's only one extraction. Okay? So right off the bat, protrusion equals four equals upper and lower extraction, right there. The moment that patient walks in and they said, my profile is a little protrusive, the only treatment plan you have is for bicuspid extraction. That's the only treatment plan you got, okay? And not to make it Sounds so, maybe I'm a little too nasty. Everybody knows what a goldfish is, right? Okay, goldfish has the lip kind of sticking out. So if, a, if the patient's profile looks like a goldfish, you really don't have an option but to extract, isn't it? Right? And this is sort of her chief complaint. I think my profile is sticking out a little too much. Why not, it's just, why not just extract the upper? Because, Tiffany, we need room to retract the upper. If you don't extract the lower to create room, you won't have room to retract the upper. Upper extraction can get rid of overjet, right? That's overjet profile is protrusion, right? So that's a very good question. So if you think about it, for this case, some of you agree with me that she has gummy smile. So my next question would be this. If I extract in this case, is her gingival display going to increase? Yes or no? What do you think? Yes, of course, because as I extract, I retract, the teeth are going to dump right back gingival display is going to increase. So if you don't know how to correct gingival display, you can't really take on this case, isn't it? Right? And guys, in progressive orthodontics, we are the king and queens as far as, as, far, as far as, as it comes to treating gingival display. Okay, so let me show you what she looks like. That's her teeth. I mean, this is an extraction. I mean, she's screaming out extraction all the way through. Okay. All right. And yes, we do. We will teach you guys how to trace lateral ceph. We will teach you guys how to trace frontal ceph. Okay. We will not do orthodontics until we learn how to do frontal ceph, lateral ceph tracing. That's a requirement. Okay. Some of you know the orthodontists who do not even use a ceph. Okay, to me, the standard of care is having a lateral ceph and a frontal ceph as far as orthodontics is concerned. So we will teach you guys how to do that. That's in seminar one and seminar two. Right off the bat, we'll teach you guys how to do that. Okay, so let me show you what she looks like at the end. Guys, that's her high smile. This is her high smile. Okay. Look at her, look at the profile, okay? Look at the teeth. This is before and after. Look at the profile change. Are you happy with the profile change? Yes or no? Give me your answer, anybody. Is that profile acceptable now to you guys? Just put a yes or no, anybody, okay? Are you happy 
with the gingival display correction? Yes or no? I am. Right? Now, this case was a little bit more complicated, which right off the bat, most of you are not going to be able to do. This case involved four bicuspid extractions, a couple of screws back there to lift the premaxilla. Okay, and the case was then followed with a full mouth crown lengthening and gingivectomy. Okay, and we will teach you guys how to do that. And I'm a general dentist, guys. Okay, I am a general dentist like most of you are, if not all of you. And, and to me, this is, again, very satisfactory for me. I get a lot of satisfaction for treating cases like this. Because not only do I get their teeth straight, I change the overall look. Right, everybody? Okay. So that's what she looks like before and after. Okay. So most of you are thinking, well, great. I mean, you've been doing this for 20 years. So does that mean that anyone can do orthodontics? Because that's usually the question everybody asks, right? You know, everybody's like, well, you're showing your cases, which is fine. But what if we just started in ortho? Well, here's how progressive orthodontics works, okay? We have, we have support system and our support system is so advanced, so good that when I was a student just going through POS, I had the best instructors taking me every step of the way, okay? We have this thing called the case consulting and we have this thing called the case mentoring, okay? A case consulting is where we simply give you a treatment plan and you follow our steps step by step. A case mentoring is when you choose a mentor and that mentor help you every step of the way, every single month, anytime when you have questions, we're there for you, okay? Um, I've been, I started teaching for POS in 2007 or 2008, I don't quite remember. So I've been teaching for the company for a while. Um, and I'm, guys, I'm not, I'm not just saying this because the reality is I don't, I don't get paid based on how many cases you start. Okay, um, I truly believe that we have the best support system out there, okay? Every day, I answer about 40 to 50 emails. Today is Sunday. So I'm gonna show you what my email box looks like, okay? All right, so let me show you real quick. All right, I woke up on Sunday. Okay, this is my email box. These are all questions doctor ask. Okay, sometimes the, the, so what the doctors do is they'll send me their progress. Okay, and they'll ask questions like, hey, what do you think about my brackets? Does it look good? Okay, all right. So this doctor is from, this doctor is from Australia. He and I have been working together for many years, okay? So he sends me a bunch of cases, case progress. He asked me to evaluate this for him, okay? Does he need a new lower lingual arch? That's what he's asking, okay? All right, more questions about the brackets, okay? All right, so the support system is there. And you can see I've answered all their questions. Okay, so on the sent box, that's what I did today, just today. This is today, Sunday. This is today, just Sunday. That's all the questions I answer on the Sunday, on the Sunday, okay? This is Saturday. Saturday wasn't a busy day, thank God, okay? All right, so we have, the reality is we have really good support systems, okay? Now the doctors would ask me questions and I will answer them right back, okay? So, and I've made it 
a rule for me that I should always answer their question within 24 hours. This doctor asked me this question this afternoon at 3.28, okay? And I answered him back at 3.31 this afternoon, okay? So why am I showing you this? I'm showing you this because I want you guys to know that we are here to support you guys if you're ever interested in taking our program, okay? All right? Because ultimately, when you start doing orthodontics, you need somebody to be there every step of the way, right? Okay. So let me show you some cases that were done by students. So this is not my case, guys. This is not my case. This is a case that was treated by one of my, my doctor in Australia. Okay, so obviously this is a class three case. Okay, and I love I love this. I mean, this reminds me of that photo about evolution from monkey to man, right? Okay, look at the profile from this gentleman to this gentleman right here. The patient could barely close his mouth. Now this profile looks great, right? This is obviously a class three. Okay. And if you look at the before and after, this was a simple lower four, lower bicuspid extraction. And that's how we were able to correct the anterior cross bite. So this is definitely not my case. This is a case that was treated by a, a doctor in Australia. All I did was provide a treatment plan for her. And she carried it out every step of the way. Okay, and I think all of you would agree the outcome is very good. Right? Okay. Obviously, she took out the lower bicuspids, right? This is a class two case, a ton of overjet. And that's how she finished the case. So, this is an upper first bicuspid extraction. Again, these are not my cases. These are cases that the doctors treated while they were going through the program. Okay, so you can see an upper four extraction, upper bicuspid extraction. Okay, this is a non-extraction case with a cervical head gear. Okay, yeah. So this case started with a lot of class two on both sides, the case finishing class one, right? So that's kind of what we have in the program. Okay, everybody? Okay. So everybody always asks this question. I get that we can do this, but what if the case is really complicated and I simply don't know where to start? Well, let me show you this, okay? So we have a software and this is free for everybody. This is called SmileStream, okay? You can actually create an account after this class, all right? You won't get all, this, all, all these until you become a student but this is called SmileStream, okay? And this was a case that I got this morning. And let me just quickly show you what the doctor's know was, okay? <sighs> let me quickly show you guys real quick what the doctor's know was, okay? So the note for this little girl is that this patient is missing an upper central, okay? All right, so let me show you what this case looks like. Okay, there you go. This girl is missing a central right there. She got her central incisors knocked out on a horse, on a riding a horse. She's nine years old. Okay. She doesn't like to smile because she's missing a front tooth. 
right? Okay, she's still, this is mixed dentition. She's only nine years old. She, she's got a bunch of primary teeth that's still left in place. If I were to give you this case, or if the parents brought this little girl in here, what do you think the patient's gonna to wanna to know? What do you think the parent's gonna ask you? Well, the parent's gonna ask you right away, can you do something with that space? Right, everybody? So that's what she's missing right here. She's missing a central, okay? Patient can't smile. Patient doesn't want to smile because she's missing a front tooth, right? Okay, so if I were to ask you, based on this profile, what are you gonna do with this? Are you going to add this back? Yes or no? Anybody, give me some answers. What would you, what would you like to, what are you gonna tell the parents when, when this little girl comes to your office? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Anybody, does anybody have an answer for me? Uh, no, try to move the lateral into the central position. Okay, so Tiffany, if you say you're going to move the central into the, I'm sorry, if you're going to move the lateral into the central position, that means you're going to use the cuspid as a lateral, isn't it? Right, Tiffany? And if that's the case, you're going to have to match these two teeth to look like these two teeth. Right? Okay, so if before you answer whether or not you can move these two teeth over, you have to look at the posterior also. I have a lot of class two here. I mean, that's the, that's the mesial buccal cusp. The mesial buccal cusp should be here, isn't it? Right? Madeline says, align the teeth and keep the space for number eight until the girl grows to 18. Use flexible partials for eight. And you know what? That is not a bad treatment plan, Madeline. Okay. The only question you're going to have to answer is whether or not the parents are going to be okay or if the kid is going to be okay wearing a kitty partial for the next eight to 10 years. Right? This girl is already kind of being bullied at school. Now that she has to put a partial in there, that's going to make her look like a quote unquote old lady. I don't know if she's going to be willing to do that. Right? Not to mention the fact that if you do add back that central incisor, you still have a lot of class two. You have to correct later, isn't it? Right? So all these are very good, very good suggestions. Okay, well, I'm not going to get into the details for this case too much because this case is actually very complicated. Because for those of you who wanted to add back the missing tooth, the second question you have to answer is this How do I get from that much class two to class one? Now, don't forget, this is class two right here. This is the sixes, this is the molars, first molars, right? Mesial buccal cusp should be at the central groove. So I'm about eight to 10 millimeters off. If I add back that central, I'm going to end up with a huge overjet, right? Just some food for thought. Okay. On the other side, I have a lot of class two also. That's the mesial buccal cusp of the upper six, upper molar. It should be right here. Right? So not only do we have to worry about the missing tooth right here, we also have to take occlusion into consideration, isn't it, everybody? So the case is not so simple as saying, I'm gonna add back that tooth. You're gonna have to understand occlusion. You're gonna have to understand how am I gonna fix that class two while adding back that tooth. And if I don't add back that tooth, what am I gonna do as a substitute? And all those things are stuff you're gonna have to understand 
if you decide to take on that case. Everybody understands that. Because you and I, as general dentists, we're always so focused on restoration. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love all the answers you gave me. I love the discussion you guys are having about the Maryland Bridge. That's completely perfect. That's very nice. Okay. But the reality is, before you decide on a treatment plan, you have to understand how the teeth are going to fit at the end. So if you don't know anything about orthodontics or occlusion, it's not going to work. Right, everybody? Okay, so, you know, not, not to get too far ahead of ourselves because I think, you know, I only have an hour with you guys, but if I have, and this is what the girl looks like right now. Let's just take out this right now. We don't need this. This is what the girl looks like. The mesial buccal cusp is in front, right? Everybody will agree with that, okay? All right. If my molar is in class two, my cusp, it has to be in class two, right? So how do I get my cusp back into class one? Well, the only option you got is taking out this tooth and bring it back here, isn't it? That's the only option you got. Right? So let me give you guys some things to think about. Okay. If molars are full class two, consider extraction of upper first bicuspid. Right, everybody? Okay. And for the case you and I were just seeing the gentleman with the class three, okay, right? The gentleman with the class three, like that, okay? Well, what's the easiest way to correct a class three, a full class three, taking out a lower first bicuspid? So the reverse of that statement I just wrote is true. If molars are full class three, consider extraction of lower first bicuspid. Right? So these are the things that you and I will have to learn. These are all the things that you and I would have to remember. Would that cause airway problem in some patient? The answer is no, okay? Airway, airway is a big issue in Madeline. The best answer I can, and that's a full lecture, four day lecture. The best answer I can give you is this. If you decide to extract, as long as you don't violate the tongue space, the airway is not going to be a problem. And you and I, we will teach you guys how far to extract, how far to retract, right? So those are the things we do talk about in the course, okay? So POS is extremely comprehensive, okay? Um, air, airway problem is always a concern. Some orthodontists have even come out and say that if you extract upper, by, upper lower bicuspid, you could lead to sleep apnea. To me, that is a very strong statement. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying that we've treated thousands of cases with four bicuspid extraction. And I personally have never seen a case that ended up with sleep apnea, okay? I've treated close to a thousand cases in my lifetime and I'm still doing more. I have not seen a case with four bicuspid extraction that led to sleep apnea. Not, not to say that it doesn't happen, Madeline. And I think that's a very great, that's a very good question that you, you ask. Okay. 
But all these are things you and I will get to discuss during the 48 day course. Okay. The way the course is designed is that of the 12 seminar series, we break them down to section one, section two, and section three. Section ones are easy class one, easy class two cases, easy class three cases. Session two, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Okay. And when we get to section three, we will teach you guys how to treat orthognathic cases. Not that you're going to do surgery yourself, the oral surgeons will do it, but you have to set up the case before the surgeon can take over, isn't it? We will teach you guys how to use bone screws, TADS. Everybody knows what a TADS is, right? Temporary anchorage device. Okay. We will teach you guys how to do all of that. All right. So all these are things that we do teach you guys, okay? All right. Any questions about anything I have discussed so far? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, do you have the 12 sessions courses in yeah gabby can you answer that question for us in yes. dallas or with yeah i'm yes we have sure a we dallas do. live class starting uh, may 13th through the 16th um it's the two-year program 12 seminars four days each yeah because i believe we have locations in dallas fort worth we have in houston this, for sure mm -hmm. Yeah, so the Houston class is going to be IAT. It's a different format. Okay. It's hybrid. It's four um, live, uh, we call them modules. So it's four three-day live seminar and self-study. Um, yeah. Houston starts in September. Uh, the Dallas live class is a traditional 12 uh, seminar series. We're starting in Orange County in June and New Jersey in uh, May, uh, Detroit in May, and um, what other? Oh, we have Atlanta IAT too. And yeah, so let me explain the IAT format a little bit for you guys. The IAT stands for Internet Assisted Training. The information that's being taught is exactly the same. The only difference is that you are going to have to spend some of your own time studying it. So right off the bat, you, you, you kind of have to know who you are as far as a student. I, I, you know, and let me just be very clear with you guys right, right away. You know, Gabby and, and Yassine may not be happy when I say this. Guys, if you're going to do orthodontics, you have to put in the time. There's no way you're not going to put in the time. Okay. But I can guarantee you once you come through the tunnel, when you start to see the light flickering at the end of the tunnel, it is a great feeling. Okay. All right. You, you really have to put in the hours. Um, and if you don't think you're one of those doctors who can sit in front of a computer and look at the internet, then the life course may be better for you, okay? But if you are very self-disciplined and you have no problem every day finding a few hours to study on your own, then the IAT is great because you literally can stay at home and just watch the videos, um, watch the study material online, and you can learn this at your home wearing a pajama. I mean... You know, I, I, I personally, I know myself. So when I went through the program, the live class was always better for me because I get to interact with other doctors. I get to know what other people are doing in their clinic. Okay. But that's something for you guys to decide. Once we enroll in the program, when can you start treating ortho cases? That's a great question. The answer to that is from day one. And I'll tell you why from day one. Because when the more cases you take, the more mistakes you're going to make. And when you make a mistake, guess who's going to be there? We are. You saw how many emails I got 
just this, this morning, okay? So when you have a question, you email it to one of us, we'll tell you what you did right, what you did wrong, go back and fix it, okay? Now, never, ever tell the patient that you're just starting to do ortho and that's your first case, right? Because that's like, you know, you know how sharks can smell blood in the water, right? So that's like your that's like an open invitation for attack. Now, when I started my ortho career, my first case was a class two div two with an impacted cuspid. I did the impaction surgery myself. I retrieved the cuspid, okay, and it was very successful. To this day, twenty years later, the mom and I are still friends on Facebook. They still don't know that her son was my very first ortho patient. That's how you do it. Okay. So guys, the answer to your question is, I want you to start taking cases. The more cases you take, the better. The record I have right now is this doctor in Chicago, Illinois. In a two years program, he started 300 cases, 300 in a two years program. And how do I know that? Because all 300 cases were diagnosed by me, okay? Now, he was working in a Medicare area, so his fees are lower, about $3,000 to $3,500. But you take $3,000 and you multiply that by $300, that's a million dollar right there, guys. Okay, so, so our philosophy in progressive orthodontics is always take cases. And the next question you would have is, well, how would I know if this case is suitable for me? Very easy. Okay, pick an instructor you like to work with, send an email to them with the ortho records and have him or she take a look at it and say, hey doc, is this case suitable for me? I'm in seminar one, okay? And if we say the case is suitable, then take it. If we say no, don't do it. Refer it to somebody else. Now, gradually, the amount of referral you send to the orthodontist is going to go less and less and less and less and less. So expect that Christmas package, Christmas gift, to become smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until one day, it's just a Christmas card. And that's exactly what happened to me. Every year when I started doing ortho, because I wasn't taking on all kinds of cases in the beginning, the gift basket was this big. I mean, it had everything I wanted in there. I mean, if I was starving on an island, that gift basket will allow me to survive for at least a month, right? But gradually when they start to know I was doing ortho, the next thing they say would be, hey, you know what? I know you're doing ortho. If you ever need help or if the case becomes difficult, send them to me, all right? And I would always say, I would always politely say, thank you, but I think I got it. So the gift basket becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until one day it was just a Christmas card. And guess what? I love that. Okay. Because that means I'm treating everything within my practice. Okay. By, you know, a quick story. By the time I sold my practice in Arizona, I had over 5,000 patients and I never had to market externally. Everything was internal referral, okay? Patient would be like, hey, Brian, you're doing ortho. I've got a cousin, I've got a nephew, I've got a niece who needs ortho. Do you mind if I send him your way? I'm like, do it, okay? All right? So I never had to market outside that I do orthodontics. It was all internal referral. And that's kind of what you want. You don't really want to market yourself as somebody that's doing orthodontics all the time, you know, because you do get attacked by the orthodontist. But for those of you who have your own practice, you have your own patient base. Once you start to treat orthodontics in your office, patient knows about it, word gets around, and all of a sudden, everybody is going to start sending patients to you. I mean, you know, as long as you're a nice guy, right? Okay. Okay, any other questions, guys? Any other questions? Okay, any questions I can answer? All right, 
And for those of you who are interested, we do teach you guys how to put bone screws right there. Okay. This was a case that was treated by one of my doctor in Singapore. And um, <laughs> I was actually in Singapore giving a lecture that weekend. So I went to her office and I placed this tab for her. Okay. And she did this one and I did these two later for her. Okay. So shh, I'm not allowed to practice in Singapore, but I still did it for her. Okay. I've gone to Houston, um, help the doctors place tabs. I'm the assistant. They're the doctor. Okay. I actually sat there, suctioned their blood, suctioned the patient's spit, and I told the doctor exactly where to put the bone screws. Okay. So the support is there. All right. Okay, so my, my biggest, and I hope the biggest takeaway for you guys from this one hour lecture is not so much that ortho is something you, you must do right now. I think the biggest takeaway is that, first of all, the support system is there. Secondly, okay, you will be able to treat a variety of orthodontic cases. The only kind of cases I refer out are the patient that comes in and say, I must see a specialist. And when the patient says, I have to see a specialist, guess what? I refer the patient to the orthodontist I hate the most. Let them deal with it, okay? All right. The second kind of case that I refer patients out are the ones I don't wanna see. Those are the only two types of patient I will refer. Otherwise, I treat all kinds of ortho. I've done class one cases, class two, class three, non-extraction, extraction, mixed dentition, bone screws, orthodontic cases. I've done a variety of things. Now, right off the bat, I don't expect all of you to do that. Right off the bat, I would expect most of you to be able to take on easy class one and class two cases. In fact, usually after seminar one, usually I tell my doctor this, after seminar one or two, you should be able to treat class one, class two, class three easy cases, non-extraction for sure. Okay, and, and why am I so confident in saying that? Because in our software, okay, all right, we'll teach you guys how to do lateral step tracing, okay? We will teach you guys how to do model analysis. And what we do here is then we have this thing called the visual treatment objective, sort of like a before and after. The blue is obviously the before, the red or the orange, magenta, whatever color you call that. That's the after, okay? So this sort of gives you an idea of what the patient would look like if you were to treat this case. And that's called the visual treatment objective, VTO, okay? So that gives you an idea of what the patient would look like if you were to treat this case. And that should give you a lot of confidence that your case should look at the end fairly nice, okay? So we do have softwares that will teach you guys, that would help you guys diagnose cases. Do you teach expansion appliances? Absolutely we do, okay? Absolutely we do, all right? Let me see if I can find this real quick. There you go, okay? This is a six-year-old boy, okay? Six-year-old boy, okay, with a jaw shifting to one side, there's obviously transverse issue. So guess what we did in this case? simple thing we gave him was an expander. This is a bonded rapid palatal expander. We expanded the jaw like that. And at the end, that's what he looks like. Okay, and this was done in eight months. Okay, so to answer your questions, we will teach you guys everything. We will teach you guys everything. We will teach you guys functional appliances. Okay, we are as comprehensive as it is out there. And I always tell everybody, if you go through progressive orthodontics, you may not have the degree, but you're going to be better off than most of the ortho residents that just graduated from an ortho residency program. 
The only thing you and I are lacking is the degree, but I think that's also a good idea. Why? Because without the actual degree, we're not protected. So you and I are going to do better work. You and I have already, we, we've always seen cases treated by the orthodontist where when the case came back, you're like, really? Is this the best you can do? Right? And not your head if you agree with what I just said. You and I have seen that. We all have seen orthodontists. We, we all have seen cases coming back from the orthodontist. You know, and not to say that all, all the orthodontists are bad. Some of my best friends are orthodontists and their case outcome is exceptional. Okay. But you and I have always seen, I've also seen cases where it comes back. You're like, maybe the patient needs more ortho treatment. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. Right. But since you and I are not protected by, by a license, we will always have to strive for the best outcome possible. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions that we can answer for you? Gabby is here. Yasin is here. If you guys have questions, now is a great time to ask. Um, I just want to let everyone know, um, thank you for coming today. Uh, we have, if you're thinking about starting this year, we have um, all kinds of formats. We have live, we have hybrid, like Dr. Uh, Lau went over. We also have complete self-study. So if you don't want to take time out of your office um, and just study from home in your PJs, like Dr. Lau mentioned. Um, we also have a full webinar series. So if you're um, interested in attending a couple hours each week um, in the evenings and then doing self-study, we have that option as well. Um, if you want us to send you more information on these um, different formats, just uh, give us a call, a text or email. I put my information in the chat. Um, we, we do have, uh, intro special. Uh, this is official, officially our last intro of the season. Um, so you'll have until Friday to take advantage of um, $600 off seminar one. So if you are ready to sign up, here is a link. There's a Wufu page. Of course, you can call us and sign up over the phone too. Um, but if you're ready, again, the link is right there. And one other thing for today, in order to get your CEs, please fill out this survey and you will get your CEs once you fill it out. Okay, is there any questions that we have not answered for anybody? Okay. Yeah, so for those of you who are interested in taking the courses online, um, let me quickly take a look at this, see if I can find this real quick. Okay, so this is sort of the format, and let me see if I can find this real quick. Okay, so... All right, so that's me lecturing in California. Oh my God. You can you, you can actually watch it in twice the speed, which actually could save you a lot of time. Okay, so that's sort of the way. Here's me talking, and the screen right here is right here. Okay, this is an all in high definition. So for those of you who who simply do not have the time to come to class, that's another option too. Okay. All right, any questions about how the course is set up, okay? Um, you know, guys, my, my, my feeling is always this, that, you know, the economy is doing great right now, you know, and if you believe that to be the truth, then hopefully the economy will still be great for the next few years. Um, in the history of the United States, we all know that the economy goes up and down, okay? When there is a down economy, you're gonna have to find a way to support your office. And to me, orthodontics is what really saved a lot of our careers out there. You know, um, I don't know if you guys know this fact that on the record, it's the endodontist that makes the most money. 
But off the record, it's actually the orthodontist that makes the most money. So you kind of go figure it out, okay? And a lot of people would always said to me, you know, I, I simply don't feel comfortable doing ortho because when I was in dental school, that's what they tell us. We're not, we're not cut out to do ortho. Only the smartest people in class are allowed to do it. And to me, that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Excuse my language, okay? The reality is, the reason we don't do ortho is because we have never been trained enough. We've never been really, thank you, Peter. We've never, we've never been um, properly introduced to the world of orthodontics, okay? We don't have experience in doing it. If you think back to the first molar root canals you did, it is very scary, isn't it? I still remember the first root canal, the very first molar root canal I did after graduation in 1990, in, in 2000, I broke a file on my first molar root canal, okay? And it was a size number 15 file I broke. And I'm sitting there in a the chair, I'm looking at, at the broken you know, hand file, I'm looking at the patient and I have no idea what to do. And I went to my boss, my boss came over, and he stares at me, he rolls his eyes, he goes in there and like, I don't know, I still don't know what he did. In like five minutes, he took out that broken file. And I'm just like, right? Okay, do I still break, do I still break files? Of course we all do, right? I call it file separation. We don't call it broken files anymore, okay? But do I, do I get scared by it? No, why? Because I've experienced, and I and I and I truly believe in this statement. And yeah, let me see if I can find this. And and I and I truly believe in this statement. You know, I I I came up with, I came up with this to lecture to my fourteen year old son. You know, confidence is through experience. Experience is, is through repetition. How do you gain confidence? By experience, right? How do you gain experience? Repetition. If you can do the same thing over and over and over and, and the results are great, the more cases you treat, the, mo the more confidence you're gonna have, isn't it? Right, Joshua? That's just a reality, isn't it? Okay. So I'm, I'm hoping that you know, with the limited I, limited time I have with you guys, that you at least take something out of this lecture. And I'm hoping that you somehow feel excited by some of the things I've shown you. And if any of these things that I've shown you pique your interest, it's worthwhile to give Ortho a shot. Whether or not you do it through us, I don't really care because I don't get paid by that. But if you're going to be serious when it comes to doing orthodontics, I think you have to start with the basics. And what is the basics? Well, understanding occlusion, okay? Understanding the biomechanics, okay? All those stuff we will teach you, all right? So if you, if you, after this course, after this webinar, after this intro, you're sitting on a Sunday evening, maybe a glass of red, and you're just thinking about what, what you want to do as far as making your ortho career, you're making your career more successful. Not that, you know, I'm sure all of you are very successful in your own right, but if you want to take your dental career to the next level, you know, maybe adding orthodontics to what you're doing already is something that can make it work. Okay, any questions, guys? Anybody? Gabby, Yassine, do you guys have anything to add? Now, did, um, did you mention at all during your presentation, Dr. Lau, that we have a full life retake policy? Yes. Yes. And to me, that's actually one of the most important reason I decided to take POS because like I said to you guys earlier this evening, I told you guys I took POS three times. So that's almost six years out of my life. 
Okay. So, you know, we, we're always updating the information to make everything um, more up to date. So I say we have a lot of doctors who took POS 10 years ago. They decided to come back. 10 years later, it is still free. Okay. So we are always constantly trying to update the information because right now we're at what's called a generation seven. So we started at generation one. I joined POS at generation three. So now we're at generation seven material. Okay. So we're constantly updating. We have a big, big instructor group. There's about 50, 60 of us worldwide. We are located in Europe, Asia, Australia, of course, the States. Okay, and, plus, and here's an added benefit. Let's say, for example, if you decided to take a trip to Bangkok, a family vacation, well, guess what? If you if there is, happens to be a class that weekend in Bangkok and you sign up for the class there, guess what? The entire trip could be written off as a business trip. That's an added benefit if you ask me. Okay. So, you know, I, and, I, and I've, I've gone to places where I didn't think I would be. I've taught in Madrid. I've taught in Amsterdam. I've taught in... Vienna, okay, I've taught in um, Prague, and uh, not Prague. I've taught in Croatia. I've been to Australia. I've been to just about every little country in, in Asia. So I don't know. I, I, I think we, we are by far probably the biggest orthodontic program for general dentists out there. I don't, I don't see anybody bigger than us. And if you find somebody that's bigger than us, I would love to know, because I don't, I don't think we, I, I think, and we've trained thousands and thousands of students. So, you know, it's, and it does work. The system works. Um, it's just a matter if you have to have a leap of faith. Okay. And I, and I, and I know you never met me. Most of you don't even care who I am. And I, and I respect that. But the reality is, at some point in time, you're, you're going to have, to, if you're serious about work though, that leap of faith is really important. And if you still need more help or you have questions, you have my email, please send me an email, okay? Also, um, sorry to interrupt, I wanted to add, yeah. you talked about consulting and mentoring. Yes. Um, new students to the traditional ortho series all get one free mentoring case so um that in without having to pay any additional fees um an instructor will mentor your case uh, your first case for you and you get a 200 dollars credit to buy the materials for that case so that's something we offer all new students um and then if you if you enjoy the service and you want to continue using it, then you would um, obviously pay for consulting or mentoring, um, but we do give you one free. There you go. See that everybody? Okay. So, you know, guys, if you, I don't know if everybody has my email, but I, I, read, I wrote it down twice. If you still have questions or you feel like you need to talk to me by phone, just shoot me an email, I'll give you my phone number. I've never given my personal phone number to anybody, but for this webinar, I will, okay? So if you feel like you have to talk to somebody, talk to me, um, just shoot me an email, okay? All right, any other questions? Anybody? If I can't make it to May 13th, do I have to wait two years? No. What I would suggest is this, Madeline, um, and I still think this is the truth for POS headquarters. As long as you can join before seminar three, I think you, you should be able to make it. The first two, if you missed the first two seminar, you can always watch it online. Okay, Madeline? Yeah. Um, we, we will have actually the New Jersey classes the following weekend and it will be available on Zoom. 
So if you can't make that 13th through uh, the 16th, then you can do the following weekend um, through Zoom, or you can travel to another location. But if you don't want to travel, then you can do the Zoom option to make up and continue yeah. with the Dallas class. Now, for those of you who are interested, here's another offer I can give you guys. And Gabby and Essie, please back me up on this, OK? Um, I am scheduled to teach a seminar one for the Malaysian class. Now, because of the time zone difference, the Malaysia class will start at 6 p.m. and finish at 2 a.m., OK? So if you want to see how the course is ran, feel free to join us for a few hours on that seminar, OK? Um, the date for seminar one, it, it is a four day seminar. You're not, you know, you don't have to be there for four days. Um, it'll be on April 20th at 6 p.m. Okay. All right. So that would be the seminar one for Malaysian class. Okay. That's a brand new class that we're starting. I don't know anybody in that class. It's going to be done by webinar. There's about 35 doctors in that class who's already signed up for that. If you want to see how the class is taught, how the format is, feel free to let Gabby or Yassine know. They'll hook you guys up with the link. Just come in for Make sure you tell us you're coming because the coordinator will have to know who's who. Otherwise, they may just kick you out, OK? All right, so if you're interested in that, just let us know. It is in, on April 20th at 6 p.m., and that's Pacific Standard Time, okay? So if you're not doing anything, and, it, and that is a Wednesday evening, so if you don't, if you have time, just come in and join us, okay? All right, Gabby, you want to answer that question? Certificate? Uh, they can't hear you. You're, you're on mute. Sorry, um, I believe it's automated, so you should be getting it within a few minutes. If you don't, then you'll get it tomorrow. Okay, perfect. All right. Is there any other questions about the course or how this is done um, from for the for the people who are still here? Madeline, any questions? Anybody else? Peter, Josh, everybody, Mohammed. Mahmoud, sorry, not Mahmoud, Mahmoud, okay. All right, okay, perfect. Will you be my mentor? Uh, you know, it depends. Um, it really depends on who goes, who teaches the um, Dallas class. Because my, my philosophy is always this, if you, I, and I'd be happy to mentor you, Madeline. Here, here's what I would suggest, because you're going to meet different instructors in the Dallas location. Um, I, and I, I honestly don't know how POS is going to be doing this. Um, we, assuming that, you know, I know I, and I know there's no travel restrictions, uh, I will be happy to be at Dallas one of these days. Uh, you know, I'm hoping that if we have a live class in Dallas, that of the 12 seminars, you'll at least get to meet me once. OK, um, before pre-COVID, I was traveling the world teaching maybe 20 seminars a year. One year, I did 35 seminars. So that's 35 weekends away from home. Maybe that's why I'm still married. You know, when you're not home all the time, you're married long. You, you can stay in a marriage longer. OK, um, teach clear aligners. We do. It is a separate course, though. OK. Sunny, it is a separate course um, besides the 48 days. We have our aligner series. And I believe if you take the aligner series in combination with the traditional work, the wire work, though, you get a huge discount, right, Gabby? I, yes. Yassine, yes. right? Yassine is nodding his head. Okay. So, okay. So that's something that's there for you guys. Um, yeah, so if you if you have the time, you have the energies, um, feel free to take both both courses con concurrently. It's the um, aligner series. It's only four seminars, three days each. Total is twelve days. 
okay? And I can guarantee you by the time you finish the alignment class, you're gonna scare the crap out of those technicians when you send your request in, because they're gonna be like, this doctor knows what he or she's talking about, okay? All right, and I, to me, that's, that's a great feeling, okay? All right, so yes, we do teach aligners and we teach it very well. We're, there, we don't really care which aligner system you use. Um, Invisalign, clear, correct, sure, smile, DIY. I don't really care which one you do. I, I do DIYs now, but that's me, okay? All right, I, I do my own setup. I do my own 3D printing. I do my own aligner trays. Um, the next step, that's coming down the pipeline. It's printing your own aligners, okay? So that's something that's coming really, really soon. Um, it's, it's already started in, in a lot of countries. The FDA just hasn't approved it yet here, okay? But that's, and I'll, I'll just give you guys something to look at, okay? Google this company, okay? This is a company um, based in South Korea. Now the Koreans got it right. It, it's a clear aligner. It's a, it's a clear resin. You can actually print the aligners. So you don't have to do a, a, a 3D model print. You don't have to do, do the clear suck down. It'll just print it out, okay? Now this one is, it's, so Graphy is the resin. Um, Sprint Ray has already signed up on it, okay? It's not in the States yet, even though Graphy says it is, but it's not, okay? So, but it's coming down the pipeline, okay? So that's, once once the FDA passes that, that that's like the next level of aligners you can do because now all you have to do is set it up. I don't care which software you use, Okay, there's tons of software out there. Um, and to me, that's the next generation of aligners. Why? Because when you send the case to, uh, say, Invisalign or Clear Correct, they always give you the entire set. And halfway through, if it doesn't track, whatever that's left is discarded and you have to start over. But if you learn how to do this on your own, you can literally adjust the aligner every single month and print your own aligners. And to me, that means now you have all the controls again. Isn't that great? I mean, and I think that's coming. It's, 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 it's already out there. Okay, all right. Guys, any other questions? Okay. And again, guys, if you're going to do aligners, really, you have to understand ortho. Because if you don't know ortho, you don't know occlusion, you're just setting up yourself for failure. Because whatever the technician gives you, you're going to have to trust it. Okay? Because let me give you a very quick example. If you're going to distalize the upper molar to correct class two, well, we know aligners can do it. But how much can the aligners distalize? Right? Okay, because if you have a case with a ton of class two, the aligners may not be able to do it. So you have to know the limitations. The technician isn't necessarily gonna tell you all that. Okay, any other questions, people? All right, and I appreciate those of you who are still here. Um, that means a lot, okay? And everybody, for the for those of you who are still here, you have my email. Free, feel free to shoot me an email about anything. Okay. All right. If not, we will close it for tonight. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Anyone? All right. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate that. Okay. Bye, guys.